Um, it's a, it's going to be a much longer uh, a time for that to happen. And so I think our, our patience is being tried uh, tremendously here. But the one thing we know and we all are part of is that the downtown economy really is based on uh, many pillars, many pieces of, of, the, of, of uh, activity. Uh, maybe the way you could think about it a little bit is like a, a, an automobile engine. You know, we have a number of cylinders and you really need all the cylinders to be firing to really be high performing. And so uh, uh, I think one of the things we're trying to look at right now is just sort of how will that work? Uh, what comes back first and how we sort of build back to getting back to, to normal and hopefully beyond, excuse me. Let me start with just talking quickly about our office market. Uh, mainly I'm starting there just because it's such a big piece of the economic uh, uh, picture of downtown uh, with uh, 51 million square feet. And that does include uh, some of the governmental buildings as well and almost 170,000 workers uh, with about 20% of those being public workers as opposed to in private entities. Um, you know, we're the, by far the largest concentration in the entire Houston region. Our office vacancies uh, right now are running about 20.4%, uh, and that is gone up over the summer uh, a little bit, uh, but we still are a little bit below the regional the number of 21.5. So uh, you know, I think we're, we're experiencing what everybody in Houston's experiencing when it comes to um, the office market. Um, I think one thing that uh, I should say is that there's been pretty good leasing activity uh, and clearly what we're seeing and some of you are I'm sure participating with this is that we're really everybody's working overtime right now figuring out how the office environment will work uh, when we all come back. Uh, um, we <clears throat> started back in uh, May actually working with our colleagues at Metro on, on surveying uh, companies within downtown uh, to try to get some idea of what, what plans are for the, for the comeback of their workforces. And we've been doing this weekly. And what we've been doing is providing the information to Metro because Metro really was at a point where it needed information to make decisions about how to put more transit service on for downtown and mainly park and ride. Um, and so uh, this has been turned out to be a very, very useful tool. I'm not gonna go all the way back. Uh, it'll be, it's an interesting study if you look at it, but I'm looking, I'm showing you here on the screen, uh, the mo two most recent surveys, one conducted on August 3rd and another one uh, just this past Monday. And we asked employers if, how much, <clears throat> what percent of your workforce, and we just did it by deciles. So either had 0% or 10% or 20, uh, it, are you expecting back uh, for, in this case, uh, uh, was on one side all of August and then we took it another uh, week, uh, this, this week, and we took it to Labor Day. So you can see that well over half, 61%, uh, this week of the employer survey say that it's somewhere between zero and 10% of their workforce uh, will be back, uh, 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 um, you know, in, in during this time we're in right now. We then uh, took, that, we took that further uh, and asked the question about, well, what about September? And so you can follow this again. You can see uh, we jumped from 61% down to, whoops, get it right here, 61% uh, down to 50% uh, that, that say that they can be, uh, that they, We'll, we'll have zero to 10. So we do have more coming back uh, in September. And then we asked the question, uh, just sort of push it a little bit further. We asked the question of, do you have plans for the fourth quarter? We actually didn't ask for a percentage. And I, not, I don't think it's surprising, at least not to me it's not, that almost 60% said we don't have plans at this point uh, for the fourth quarter. And I will, uh, I will share with you some of the comments, this is, I'm not gonna go through all these, you can sort of scan this real quickly, but I think that the themes that really sort of, that you see here in terms of the comeback uh, really are, uh, are end up being, um, there's, it looks to me like there's, you're, you see everybody kind of eyeing, maybe we will be out for the rest of the year 
and, and actually come back after the first of the year. Uh, there's a lot of conversation where, you know, we all know it's all over the media, this focus on how's the interaction of going back to school work with work. Uh, and so that dynamic is, as you and I, you all are all, we're all living this right now. That's a play right now as we go forward. Um, and, and then it looks like there's a possibility of, of it being a fairly low number continuing all the way through the fall. But I want to be careful because these are, this is all anecdotal. These are just individual comments here. And we don't really have a good beat on that at this point. Um, obviously, safety and health are premier in all this. And so um, I, I think we kind of realize that, that if anything, we're going to err on the side of being safe. And so as a result, that's likely to push things back uh, time-wise as we go forward. I mentioned office leasing. And uh, we've actually done well, fairly well, as it turns out, uh, with about one point uh, total, total, and these are just selected ones, uh, leases signed. These are recent, uh, and I, you can see them here. I won't go through them. I should note that JP Morgan Chase, very large quarter of a million square foot relocation uh, into the Chase Tower, into 600 Travis, was one of the largest in the country uh, during the recent uh, months here. So. Um, that's important to note. I'll tell you what gives me hope in this, and that is, is there's a tremendous amount of construction in the office sector right now. And so um, you have the Texas Tower Building, the Heinz on uh, well under construction. It's sort of getting up on the skyline now. But also Frank Liu is moving along. You've seen some press here lately with his uh, off work, office workspace, uh, co-work, uh, mixed use uh, at the post Houston, the old post office, the Barbara Jordan post office. But the other thing I think is really helpful is that there are 14 buildings in downtown that are undergoing significant renovations. They're listed on, on the right of the slide here, and I won't go through them all, but uh, that is extremely exciting to me because it's just such a marvelously big reinvestment uh, in, in, in our downtown workspace. And obviously, as this work is done, and a lot of work is going into looking at um, how do we make it safe? Well, the great thing about it is, is that many people are here in downtown living uh, through the, the pandemic. Uh, we now have over 10,000 residents in downtown. Very proud of that number. Uh, that's, that's something, we, we just hit that here in the last you know, six months. So it's very, very exciting that we're, we're you know, coming to that point. Our occupancy is okay. It's holding up well. Uh, in some ways, it's it, one of the issues is we continue to bring new units on. And so that sort of always sort of pushes the market a little bit. Uh, and at this point, I think the, the we have a pretty favorable market for the renters uh, in terms of uh, the deals that they're, they're, they're getting. In this sector too, it's very exciting in terms of the, the, uh, what's happening in terms of new construction. Uh, there are four projects now underway. Uh, most recent, is, and you can read them here, but most recent is 808 Crawford, and that's Trammell Crow, which is a, a 43 story high rise building right across Crawford Street from the Marriott Marquis Hotel. And uh, they've just started work here in the last couple of weeks. So, you know, we, we were adding residential and we're going to continue to do so well past uh, this pandemic. So this is extremely exciting. On the hospitality front, um, uh, we, it, it's, it's very difficult because hospitality is, is very dependent on other, go back to my analogy, cylinders in the engine to be firing. And uh, uh, we have now a, over 8,200 rooms. We'll be by the end of the year over 8,300 rooms uh, in 28 properties in downtown. Um, we, at there, the statistic I will point to you, we were, it's almost 69% occupancy at our hotels in February. And we are uh, at this month now about 14.7%, having been in April as low as 4.1% occupancy uh, in, in the hotel. I want to call to your attention one of those bullets here, and that shows that uh, survey work is actually showing respondents to be 45% being very likely to take a staycation. And as it turns out, this is really an important thing 
So I'm encouraging you to think about this too. Uh, but we, we in downtown have always had been busy in the work week and not as busy on the weekends with our hotels, our people staying in hotels. We're, we're actually have a shift that's actually turned around. Staycations are playing a role in this. And I think this chart demonstrates it. So the blue is weekday occupancy. Houston's, our downtown is on the far left here. And then the orange bar is actually the occupancy on the weekends. And you can see we're not alone here. Here are comparable markets for us, comparative markets. Uh, and you can see what's happening there right across the, right across the chart. That, that weekends are by far outperforming weekdays uh, in other comparable markets like ours. And uh, the same is uh, true, let me just say, uh, this is some information with those markets across the country, including occupancy and the average daily rates where they are. And then, and as you can tell everything, that's no news to anybody here that it, it's down uh, from where we've been. Uh, uh, certainly a year ago. That's a year over year change. Uh, and then revenue per available room, uh, which is sort of the ultimate measure. Uh, Houston's a little behind, quite frankly, some of our comparable markets in terms of how we're performing. Um, we do have meetings in the works. Keep in mind that hotels are really driven by business workers and meetings and conventions and leisure travel. And so uh, there are a number of events that are on the books now, uh, from now all the way through into next July. Uh, but uh, I, the thing we all know at this point is, is it's not clear if all of these will hold or not uh, at this point, just because, again, we don't quite know how this is all going to play out. Food and beverage is so dependent on everything we have here. If you think about it, uh, uh, it takes people to really drive the over 400 restaurants and bars that we have in downtown. And of course, at this point, the bars are closed uh, by order, uh, but we actually have surveyed, uh, it looks like at this point, about half of the downtowns, both street level and tunnel, food court, basically all the restaurants in town, about half, in fact, are actually open for dine-in or takeout business as we speak. And the one thing you want you to think about, that sounds like a that's a, wow, that's only half, but you turn it the other way around, that's still a very lot of food service establishments uh, that in fact are open at this point in time. Uh, we, people keep asking about the number of real closures uh, other than temporary closures. And at this point, we only can document five that are listed here. But I think it's also interesting to note that there's three under construction, uh, Sweet Green and McIntyre's and Common Bond. So, uh, we're, it, it's kind of going both ways. Uh, keep in mind, I think all of those started right before the pandemic, so construction continues. In the sports area, uh, which is another one of our, our cylinders, sports and entertainment, I don't think I need to really recite for you what's happened. It's been trying for all of us, and especially the teams. Um, we gave you here some of what, I mean, these numbers are big, you know, three quarters of a million people attended Rockets games last year. Uh, and so just th those pieces of the puzzle here, that's, those are big numbers that really has huge impact. And, and you can see the Astros last year was almost 2.9 million uh, people visiting downtown. Um, it, I don't need to tell you the Rockets are playing uh, over in a bubble, <laughs> in the Disney bubble in Florida. Uh, uh, but the Astros, as you know, are playing, and it is a little sad to look out the windows and see the stadium, and you can see the board, scoreboard, but you also realize there's very few people other than the players there uh, playing the game uh, as we all watch on TV. Uh, and then um, the Dynamo, uh, which, uh, and, and Dash obviously have come back, but again, without, without the crowd. Um, but we should note here that the Dash, of course, did win the, the National uh, Women's Soccer League Challenge Cup. Uh, so that's a, a point of, uh, of pride, uh, recent, that we should note. And then the Dynamo are cl clearly on a shortened season, but looking to come back. Uh, my understanding at this point right now is Rockets, it's a little bit unclear about next season's start date. Uh, the other issue is... Uh, 
uh, for baseball, it looks like it's going to be pretty much, if all goes right, on its schedule for an April 1 start. And I, I believe at this point, I think both the soccer is also on kind of it would be its normal start. So, um, uh, you know, we're coming back gradually, but not with many fans, at least right, right now. On the theater district, almost the same situation. Uh, you can see our total attendance is about 800,000 uh, people per year that, that come to downtown for one of our arts, some form of arts performances. And um, I'm not gonna go through this entire list for you, but I think maybe the general conclusion here is this. One, right now, everybody's trying to figure out a way to work virtually uh, or with very limited live seating such that social, social, social distancing is um, in, in being practiced. And it goes for performers as well as for uh, the audiences. So uh, it makes it, 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 it's challenging. I think everybody is working hard in the theater district to see how fast they can put up performances and it would have looked like at this point uh, the holidays uh, seems to be sort of a target to have more actual live uh, production um, on, on stage. Uh, and again, we'll have to just see how that, if that holds uh, as we work forward. Um, and then as we move into spring, of course, I think we all hope that we can see more of a return back uh, as we go forward. One of the keys on this, and it's true in sports or, or arts, and that is that the people who perform or play, uh, you know, need to be safe. And so it, it's not just the audiences here, it's really um, the people who make art uh, for us that, that really are, we're watching out for uh, in this return. Um, our educational facilities in downtown, which sometimes I think we don't really pay much enough attention to them, uh, uh, in fact, uh, are working one way or another to be back uh, with uh, University of Houston downtown, uh, online, uh, and, and some, some hybrid formats are being used for some of the courses. And then uh, same is true at, uh, if again, uh, which actually, be, excuse me, begins like Monday uh, for South Texas College of Law. Uh, and uh, HSPBA uh, will begin on September the 8th uh, and basically starting virtually uh, and then Incarnate Word uh, also doing virtual remote uh, as well. And um, uh, so I think everybody wants to return to campus and it's really a question of, you can see here for Incarnate Word, it's September 21. Uh, uh, so it'll, it'll be, you know, we'll see if that happens. Uh, we, we, and I, of course, that's holding true for all school at this point. We checked into our courts system. Um, you know, jury service got moved uh, away from downtown and in and, and the downtown facilities into a much bigger facility in our G arena. Uh, so it's continuing there. And then, um, as you can see here, uh, the JP courts, that's the justice courts, uh, are holding in-person dockets. Uh, the criminal courts are limited in-person dockets uh, and jury trials right now have been suspended for at least another week here. Um, uh, and then we'll see what happens. And then the civil courts are all working uh, using video hearings and trials. So um, with, in many ways, far less uh, activity in our, our Harris County courts area and then municipal courts, uh, as you can see here, have suspended trials and, and, and jury duty all the way through September 30. Uh, we'll sort of see how that plays uh, as well. And finally, sort of the, the last cylinder, which is so important because the numbers are so big, are our events that are held in downtown, literally hundreds and hundreds of events a year. Uh, and, and I'm here, I'm talking about really outdoor spaces uh, that we have these in. and. Uh, at this po point, uh, most outdoor events are canceled uh, for this fall. Uh, and then it's gonna be everybody's doing like everybody else at this point. We'll just sort of see how this comes back. What we can tell you is that the, uh, you can see here, 
the ice at Discovery Green is opening. Uh, I think House of Cards is their art exhibit is opening. It's right, right, right about now over at the Green. The, the Green's open. Um, it looks like at this point uh, there is no announcement yet on the mayor's Thanksgiving Day parade and the holiday celebration. Uh, so keep, keep, we'll have to see how that works. And then uh, we're we're looking at. Uh, uh, holiday art market in movies at Market Square Park, uh, and uh, we can vouch for that uh, at this point. We'll just again see how this all works out, but right now, market on your calendar. And then uh, Houston First is really looking at, at better ways to support Avenidas, uh, the area around the convention center and those hotels and restaurants in, in, in that area as well. So I've kind of run through the whole, the, the whole you know, gamut here of, of cylinders, if you'll let me use that uh, analogy. Um, and you can see everybody, every piece, each piece is pushing together to move forward. But you can also see that uh, uh, beginning to pick up momentum here seems to be, uh, at this point, a slow process requiring some patience as we go forward. But to me, the outlook is look at all the construction that's out there, look at all the plans that are out there going forward which certainly gives me tremendous hope in terms of where we're gonna be when we come out of this, because I think we're gonna be a far uh, better and I think very, even more exciting downtown when we, this, this is all over uh, at some point. So I'm gonna switch here for just a moment uh, and talk just a little bit about the homeless initiative that we're involved in. We, we nowadays are hearing quite a lot about homelessness because it, the homeless are so incredibly visible because there's a very small number of people on the streets compared to normal. Um, the one thing that I just want to make very clear is, is that we've been in this pandemic. We've had an emergency situation with our homeless population. Uh, you, when you think about it, if you're in a shelter, um, you know, it's a congregate living facility. And believe me, there is not social distancing. And so one of the, one of the real challenges there has been to uh, de-densify the, um, the congregate facilities, the shelters, which has meant that we've, don't, we've actually have less shelter space than we did. The city opened the temporary shelter, uh, which has helped, uh, but let me also say uh, it's, it's, it's made it very problematic in terms of if we have somebody on the street who wants to go to a shelter, it's, we don't have space for them at this point. The other issue that we've had, so the issue really is keeping keeping everyone, quite frankly, safe in this. So health checks, making sure that folks have food is an issue. And I can tell you because they can't be enforced, okay, that our misdemeanors that are used blocking sidewalks, uh, you know, camping, those things are not, really can't be really enforced at this point because there really aren't alternatives at this point for folks that are on the street. But there is an opportunity in this. We've been working actually for some months, even before COVID, of just what's the next steps with our homeless system here. And then along came COVID and actually a tremendous opportunity appeared. And that is uh, the CARES Act actually provides funding for homelessness and pre prevention of homelessness uh, during, during uh, COVID. And so uh, the city and county announced a $65 million homeless program uh, on July 1. And the goal of that is to house or to prevent over 5,000 people from uh, being homeless on the street. And I'll, I'll, this is a lot of information here and I'll just sort of give you the highlights on this only to say that uh, for us, what's far most important about this is, is that the program has intends to uh, house over a thousand people who are experiencing homelessness. Basically, peeping, people living on the street, in shelters or in encampments, uh, uh, as quick as possible. Sometimes it takes time to do that, uh, and often months and months. And what's being done here is we're using some of the funds to figure out ways to actually move faster. There's some landlord incentives or some other, other things that are being done to help move that along. The other concept in that is to actually help kind of keep, when somebody comes to the door, so to speak, on a shelter, is to immediately figure out, is there something we can do here to keep you from actually having to be at the shelter? 
if you need three months rent, three months rent will help out here to keep you from actually falling into homelessness. And then the third piece that I should mention, and there's more than that going on here with this, it's, it's pretty comprehensive, is, is in fact really extensive mental health uh, case management and substance abuse. Um, and I'm very excited about that piece of it because many people who are homeless on the street, especially in downtown, have severe mental illness issues. And so um, uh, this is funded. Uh, it's on a timeline to move quickly. Uh, I, I'll just put it this way. Uh, the district board, by the way, uh, just voted uh, $450,000 last uh, Thursday uh, to help put behind the private sector match in this. The foundations are also out there considering grants at the same time. Uh, but the idea is to have this rolling when it we get into October. And that is not easy given the scale of this program because it, it really requires hiring like 150 people uh, just to do this and multiple agencies and all of that just to kind of move this along. But the targets are, are here are the targets uh, so that you're, I don't, won't read these, but you can see it's a pretty ambitious goal in terms of the number of people to touch even just in six months. And the whole program is two years total 5,000 people. The other thing I should mention in the homeless area is part of our discussions we've been having is how do we really address the people who are on the street that we, we all see, we know them by name, and they're on the street, we did, and many of them are just severely mentally ill uh, or, or have also uh, substance abuse issues. And, uh, I, the, if you look at the green boxes in the middle of this chart, uh, you will see in their uh, homeless respite and rehab center, we are working with all our colleagues, uh, Harris Center for Mental Health, the city, county, everybody, on a, a new facility for this, which would be a first for us in the region, and I think it will have huge impact on downtown. And the second one is, is we've always needed what everybody calls a low barrier shelter, and it's actually called, they call it a NAV center, but basically it's a little different than the shelters we have right now, a little less restrictive. And quite frankly, that has taken time, but I am so excited to tell you both of these projects, these facilities are moving at this point. And I think the target right now is opening in November on these. And so uh, there are some hurdles to go, but uh, I am really excited about the impact that this can potentially have for us. So for those of you that are there, I know are very frustrated at this point. I think there is help coming and there's reason to have tremendous hope here uh, in the impact of what's going on. I can tell you the mayor and the city is very focused on homeless on the street in downtown. Obviously we're concerned about the entire region, but it's extremely visible in downtown. And so I'm very pleased that, that with the progress that we are making, I think we have reason to have pretty good hope here for what's coming. I'll quickly just touch on, in, in, in finishing up here, on just a, a few highlights of our activities and some of our affiliate organizations, the Downtown Redevelopment Authority in Central Houston. Um, we, uh, on the operating side, I just can't say enough about our downtown public safety guides and our street teams uh, who have worked tirelessly through this. And uh, you've seen them out there. And we've, thank goodness, they have been healthy uh, and we've been careful here to work their shifts and change their shifts and such that uh, if, if one shift, let's say if somebody does turn up positive, uh, you know, they're not really with everybody else. They're only with the people on their shift. We've been doing some things like that. So you may see people at different times than you're used to seeing, including people working all through the night, uh, as it turns out, some of the maintenance and, and, and work. Um, we, we do clean the encampments. I want to make that clear and hot spots on the sidewalk. We do it quite a bit. So related to homeless, uh, and, um, uh, and I can tell you yesterday, there was actually a cleaning of encampments over on, uh, under the I-69 north of the ballpark at Chartres. Um, our downtown redevelopment authority, uh, uh, is making excellent progress with the reconstruction of uh, Bagby Street. Uh, I guess maybe one of the silver linings for us has been that uh, 
there isn't much traffic. I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. But on the other hand, it's a it's a, a fact of everything I've been talking about here. It's the result of it, or it results from it. But it's really given us quite an opportunity to move with speed that I don't think any of us thought we could have on the reconstruction of Bagby. Um, it is, we're almost finished uh, paving on the west side of the street, that would be southbound. Uh, we've actually paved, if I remember right, uh, the northern two blocks are paved both south and northbound now. Uh, so we're making great progress. And as you can see way up on the north end uh, by the aquarium, that's on the picture on the right, uh, we, we've got the pavers in and uh, the pretty stuff will be coming to more of the street uh, soon. Uh, this has not been an easy project. Um, uh, we do have pressure on us because uh, in that picture on the left, that building on the left side of that picture on the left, the third floor right above those trees there happens to be the mayor's office. So he looks out his window at this all day long every day. And so um, we do have um, a cheerleader and also somebody who also is pretty good at sort of pushing us, for how fast can you move? And so, um, uh, we appreciate the help from the mayor, uh, but we're doing everything we can. It's, it's, I, I think people think that in, maybe that street construction is like construction and road construction elsewhere. Let me say, when you're working in an old downtown, which we have, uh, it is amazing what lies under the street. So when you're back doing utility work, it's a new thrill every single day in terms of what we discover. We haven't discovered any gold, unfortunately. It'd be nice if we did, uh, but we found all kinds of uh, sewer lines and water lines that weren't on any drawings uh, that were put in, you know, God knows when. Uh, and, and so uh, it, it makes this stuff particularly difficult as we move forward. Uh, probably a little easier, uh, we're very thrilled that uh, the Downtown Redevelopment Authority is moving forward on the the Southern Downtown Park. It has a name, but Angie will shoot me if I say it. Uh, it will be announced at the groundbreaking on September 29th. We took a bid, the bids came in yesterday, uh, for it's a three quarter uh, uh, of a block project. Uh, it's in the, uh, the uh, we'll get the number right on the block. It's the, the 13, no, let's see, the 1500 block of uh, Fannin. Uh, it, it is where the old Goodyear store used to be, if you remember that. So we're very thrilled uh, that this is moving forward. It has a rest, excuse me, it has a restaurant in it. Uh, the restaurant is too sweet. Uh, and so we're very thrilled about that. Uh, and so uh, the district will be operating the park. It's being built by the Redevelopment Authority. The district also, by the way, will be maintaining the new landscaping and improvements on Bagby Street as well. Uh, very different from these uh, is the downtown launch pad, which has been a, a project of, the, of um, the Downtown Redevelopment Authority in Central Houston. Um, we are, now this was announced uh, last fall. We are thrilled at this point that um, it's finished. You're looking at pictures that are very recent of this. This is on the 10th floor of 1801 Main. It's Amagee's building down, down in the southern downtown. Um, we are thrilled that it already has as its occupants, Mass Challenge, uh, Generator, and Impact Hub Houston. All three of them actually globally recognize accelerators or incubators uh, in innovation systems. And so um, we're really thrilled about it. Uh, Mass Challenge uh, has occupied uh, with two people right now. Uh, but. But uh, they do have a cohort, a big one, uh, going on and had over 500 applicants globally for this. So there's tremendous interest in Houston. Uh, and of course, it's being run virtually uh, at this point. Uh, and Generator also has a new cohort uh, and it's smaller and it, it's also running virtually as well. So uh, the latest uh, uh, entity to come in is Impact Hub Houston. We're thrilled about it. It's more an early stage. Um, accelerator, incubator, uh, and it's very focused on Houston, uh, as, and, and Generator is as well. So we're very excited about what's happening uh, with this as, as part of the whole Houston um, innovation corridor with the ION down in Midtown, Texas Medical Centers to the south, 
uh, we see the synergy of all those pieces together is huge, but we're really thrilled about this, this new, new piece. I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way here. Um, uh, there we go. But, uh, on the planning arena, uh, we are um, uh, in some progress right now on the uh, planning for the warehouse district. This is north of Commerce Street, all the way up to what will be the new right of way for uh, uh, the uh, uh, I-10 and I-45. Uh, and so that we had a public meeting just the other day. And then of course the North Houston Highway project continues to move. It's, we're working on the civic opportunities around downtown planning those. And I mean, down the drawings that are, we're working with TxDOT on. Uh, and we look for a, a groundbreaking on that work probably uh, in the summer of 2022 at this point. Um, our marketing efforts uh, uh, are continuing. Uh, it's been challenging from the standpoint that we want to say, come back, come back, but we're also trying to be very careful to be responsible uh, about uh, this. But we're right now really pushing the this, this staycation. Uh, I've mentioned the importance of those earlier. Uh, but the other issue is also helping bring people back uh, from the work. So when you come back, that you really immediately become excited and sort of reattached to the goodies that make downtown such a wonderful place to work. Um, we're also doing some uh, window uh, art and working with uh, on Main Street. Uh, and let me just say, this is mainly to really help our business. You probably saw this uh, in media, uh, but we're working with the city of Houston on Main to see what we can do to let the businesses, the restaurants and bars have more room for patrons out on the street. So we're closing the traffic lanes and uh, working through how these businesses can expand their outside uh, footprint. Uh, and, and, and we're trying to get this up as quick as we can. This is not permanent, this is only temporary. Uh, but you know, we see it six months, we actually haven't determined that. We don't even have a start date yet and uh, we have a meeting at noon and I'm gonna be doing everything I can to push this thing as fast as we can. We've gotta, we, we gotta pick it up, we gotta get this done uh, to move forward. So. Uh, with that, uh, you can, I think, get some idea that we're pretty busy around here, and uh, we've got I don't know, very high hopes for, for where we're going and what we're, where we'll, as we come out of, of COVID. Uh, so let me open it up to questions at this point. Uh, Angie, I'm going to turn it over to you to work from there. Yeah, thanks, Bob. And um, just really quickly, we do want to reiterate for a few people who popped on a little bit later that this presentation, as, as well as a recording of this meeting, will be posted on our downtowndistrict.org website. And I'll also push out an email to everyone with links. Um, so if you want to go back and look at this or send it to any of your associates or coworkers, et cetera, um, you can do so. And I know a lot of people weren't able to make it this morning as well, although we've had fantastic attendance. So um, a couple questions specific to homeless, not a shocker there. Um, but I think this, I've had a couple of people ask Bob, and this is really interesting about does more, why are we putting more money into homeless? Does that, doesn't that just encourage more homeless to call downtown home, or you know, why are we putting this investment, um, especially when some people feel like it's been negatively impacting their businesses? I think, uh, let me answer that by saying, uh, first of all, the efforts that I'm uh, actually showed you today in these new programs that are coming about are, are not just downtown focused. In fact, they're countywide, um, and, and actually regional, but uh, so it's not, I, I don't think it's, it, it actually will focus people on downtown. <clears throat> the district is putting money in largely because we do have a high concentration of homeless and we do want to be able to help with our money focus the benefits of this program uh, on downtown to help lower the number of homeless within, within the downtown area. There's a lot of sensitivity about where various facilities are located. Uh, one of the reasons why we have as many homeless in downtown is that there are a lot of facilities that are close to or in downtown. 
And I, I can tell you that some of the new facilities that are being thought through at this point uh, are not downtown. And I think, so I could argue, make a pretty strong argument that if anything, this would, we think will help lower the number of homeless, not increase the number of homeless that are in downtown. Um, you know, quite candidly, the reason why we have as many is, is a high density of population down here. Um, it's easy to panhandle, frankly, here. Uh, and so if you need money to live, it's a, it's a place you can be, but there also are a lot of services that are available. So I think there's strong sensitivity to this what the questioners are, are, I think, rightfully asking, and that is, are we encouraging more as opposed to hopefully lowering the population? I just want to assure you, we're doing everything we can to lower the population. And just kind of a follow-up to that, Bob, and then I think we're, we'll get on to a couple other topics, but um, it's been obvious that HPD has changed its enforcement practices during the pandemic that whether it's code enforcement of, of you know of course our current code is specific to people can't lay in the public right of way downtown from 7 a.m until 11 p.m that they only can have you know one tent one bike and everything else has to fit within a three by three box um, petty crime, some of those type of things. I mean, there certainly has been a shift and hopefully temporarily, but there has been a shift. Yeah, I actually, there, there are two things. The, the primary, I kind of gave the, the answer to this earlier when we were talking about it. Uh, the very first slide I had said that we, we were, uh, we were basically, you're worried about the health of, of, of these homeless folk on the street. Um, we don't have, um, we have the same issue in the jails that we do in the shelters, meaning um, we're trying to depopulate the jails at the very same time, to the extent possible, hold the numbers down because of the, 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 the fact that it's, again, congregate living, which is highly dangerous when you have a very contagious disease going on. And so human lives, frankly, come first in this. The, the, the issue for enforcement really comes down to this, that an officer on the street would like to book a case, but the DA or municipal judge, the presiding judge, they will not take the case basically because they, they're not going, they can't, they can't prosecute it. They're not gonna put people in jail. Uh, and so as a result, all they're gonna do is go over there and they're gonna just release them to the street. And so, uh, it, it's, we're sort of caught in a really uh, awkward loop right now related to this. Uh, and so it's, it's really, unfortunately, the officers who are out on the street right now really don't have the tools that we have by ordinance and law to work with. I want to be careful to say, if we got a more serious crime, obviously they're going to react and they're going to arrest. But it, I think what we're talking about here are all Class C, maybe higher misdemeanors that we're not talking about, or, or trespasses, um, which we've had ordinances and it has, they've been the tools we've been using to have some control over what's happening in the street. Um, I do want to thank everyone. We've gotten a lot of call outs for our downtown public safety guides and our SEAL teams that are out seven days a week. So thanks to everyone. And um, if there's somebody on this webinar that's not familiar with specifically our SEAL team, um, which is our um, kind of an additional layer pr of program who between our downtown public safety guides and HPD, please send me a note, send me an email, we can send you more information, but um, they are active on duty, none of that has ever kind of faltered during this time, the pandemic time. Okay, just a few other questions. Um, someone asked uh, that they heard that Chevron, who is our, I believe, largest employer, non-governmental employer in downtown, um, is not bringing back the majority of their workforce until 2021. Bob, I know you've had some conversations is that confirmed or the, the, again, still 
work in progress? Um, I've I've heard something like that, but it's I, I have not been able to confirm anything at this point. But I, I do know that there are employers, and I've talked to other employers where I know they have actually made the decision not to come back till after the holidays, so the beginning of 2021. So um, uh, at this point, it's it, as you saw the data. It's you got a, it, a lot of this is still somewhat uncertain. It's in the talking stage at this point. Um, I have a question here about um, art opportunities. I know we mentioned on one of the slides specific to Main Street, the closure to Main Street. The district is uh, talking about adding a layer of urban art to the project to give it a little bit more of an interesting pedestrian experience. Um, there was a question asking if there's going to be an open call for artists, which is a great question. Um, when we do art block projects, we really do kind of across the board. Some projects are open call for artists that may be specific just to Houston or Texas based artists. There's some projects which we um, work directly with a specific artist, et cetera. So in this particular case, because we are on such a tight deadline and we would need to realize the art project very, very quickly because we can't really do anything other than basic planning until we get the green light from the city. We are looking at doing an invitation only type of process. So we're making kind of a long list of artists to outreach to, to see who's available and who we think can realize a project of this scale, because we're talking about an entire street, block face of the street that, um, that we can work with. So for this particular project, there's not an open call for our window art project, which is being realized um, at the end of the month, there was an op open call for artists. It was specific to Texas-based artists um, with over half of them being Houston artists. So great question, but that's kind of how we're gonna proceed in, in this particular case, just because of our very, very, very tight de deadline. Um, let me go down a little bit more. I had a good question from one of our bar, bar owners, Bob, asking, is there anything that we can do to help facilitate conversations about bars reopening safely? Um, they are obviously, you know, in distress sure. because they've been closed for such a long time. They opened and then closed back again. So. Bob, is, is do we think that's something that we can help facilitate and get a little bit more involved in? Well, well as you know, it's, it's, a, it's a statewide issue at right. this point. Um, we can certainly we can certainly take a look and see if there's a way we can get involved. And I think one of the ways it will be working with the city on this, um, because it obviously relates direct, directly to what we've been working with on Main Street. Uh, I, I think we're all looking for ways to try to help uh, at this, and quite frankly, if we're doing it, we, it's really helpful to have the bars open safely, safely. Uh, and that's why one of the reasons why we're trying to do the project on Main is for that very reason, is to allow more space to make it safe uh, for. It. So uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, and um, and let us take a look at it. Let's see if we can do. Um, there is a question about, is there an, initi an initiative to market a list of open hospitality businesses to downtown residences? Uh, I'll take that one. You know, I would say probably 90% of what we're doing from a marketing front, whether it's through social, SMS, kind of you name it, is really, um, you know, pushing our list of open businesses to not just downtown residents, but to the public in general, but certainly to downtown residences as well. And um, specific to that comment, that's kind of, we had a really good conversation with our board about how we know the first people really kind of that will start coming back downtown are the office workers. So kind of the next layer in addition to residents is the workers. So as we see more people coming back to work this fall, we are going to be creating a campaign that we're right now just calling Welcome Back to Work that really welcomes people back to downtown, we've missed you, and then support local, go to our website, go here, go there to make sure you're in the loop on what's open, what's going on, so people can you know, be in really well informed. So 
um, we're taking that comment specific to residences, yes, and we're expanding that to businesses, and that's going to be a, a pretty large campaign that we're working on. Um, let's see. Any programs for restaurants to be part of to help them get through the end of the year? At this point, uh, we, we don't have any cash grants. I know the city's had a small business program uh, and we've helped them and worked with them on that. And that uh, program just but, opened on Wednesday. Right, and we don't, uh, but we don't have a separate one uh, either through the downtown district or through the downtown redevelopment authority. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of reading through the, he, these. Um, yeah, I think we're just seeing lots of comments about anything we can do to help push, you know, supporting local. Um, and, you know, we totally agree with that. Um, I think we've really kind of hit everything. Security, support of small businesses. Um, again, lots of great thank yous. I see. Let me, there's one in here that I do want to take up because I've been reached out to. There's a question here about uh, late night uh, drag racing and, and some of that, some of that late night activity. Mm. Um, let us know about that. Uh, we obviously have uh, SEAL out there late at night. We have others out there. And um, when we, you do see incidents of that, if you can let um, our operations folks know, it's helpful to, to know when that's going on. Um, I'm not sure legally what we can do. We'll have to kind of look at, see if there's any, any what can be done on that. But I'm, I'm glad you brought it to our attention. Um, I just have a, a quick, uh, can, you, can we share the link to the program offered by the city? Yes, I had sent that yes. link out specific just to the restaurants and bars um, and, and, and retailers in downtown, um, but I can uh, send that link out to the greater group um, when I send a link to the presentation. Um, and then there's kind of a final question about B-Cycle, and I think that Bob, you're the, one of the drag racing questions was specific to the B-Cycle activity happening late at night. When B-Cycle first started, there was kind of, I think there was a, you can't check it out after 10 or 11 o'clock. That may have changed, um, but I'll certainly take a look at that and we can outreach to B-Cycle. Yeah, thank you, good. Are there any more questions? Because we're uh, we're right up at our. Uh, we said we would hold it to an hour, and we're very close to that. Um, is are there are there any more? <laughs> I think that's it. Um, I think most people have my email address, Angie at downtowndistrict.org. You can feel free to email me directly um, <laughs> as well. We're all here. And accessible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before before you uh, sign off, you're fearing that you're going to sign off. Okay. Uh, I, there was a question: in, Are we prepared for a storm next week? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes. And I want to thank. Uh, let's see, Scott. Uh, Scott, I want to thank you for ra for raising that question, uh, my friend. Uh, I woke up about two thirty this morning, and I didn't go back to sleep thinking about this storm. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just say we're, 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 we're meeting in, in just a few minutes uh, to begin to look at the early preparations to be prepared, but let me just say to all of you who are on this, um, uh, please start uh, watching and monitoring this situation and uh, uh, do the early preparations. Uh, remember, we've generally had some pretty heavy, uh, very heavy, uh, rain events in more recent times. It's been a while since we've had one with pretty heavy wind, uh, and we don't know what we have here, just to be honest with you at this point. So uh, please uh, monitor this. Um, I know if you're, you are a property owner or property manager, uh, please, um, you know, <laughs> pull your plans out. Uh, let's, let's get prepared uh, for, for whatever happens, hopefully. 
uh, this doesn't turn out to be a very extreme event, but I think we've all learned you just really can't, you can't let your guard down. You really gotta be ready for these. So uh, Scott, again, thanks again uh, for, for asking that question. And Bob, we did get one more as well that I already kind of had had re replied to it from Jana of just reminding folks who may have popped on late that there is a, currently a petition out uh, that needs to be signed for, it's going out to property owners to support our new service, five-year service plan that will begin next year. So if you have a petition, please sign it, send it back to us. If you have any questions about a petition, this is very specific to property owners, please outreach to us. Yeah, this, this is important to the district. Uh, this plan sort of continues our activity after December 31 this year. So uh, we're, very, we're very focused on this right now. Uh, it, the petition is going well, but if you do have one of those petitions, uh, please uh, have the pro appropriate person sign it and get it to us. We will greatly appreciate it. I wanna thank everybody for being on today. Uh, I, I, it's, we've had a, a nice turnout here and uh, I just want to say how much I appreciate what all of you all do to make downtown the, the great place that it is and uh, the great place that we uh, are all looking forward with great uh, uh, eagerness to uh, coming back to its full strength. So thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. Please outreach if you have any more questions. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> okay.